fellas, don't drink that coffee. You'd never guess. There was a fish in the percolator. Sorry. Everybody, how you doing today? Welcome to Pasadena, California. Uh, Pasadena is just Los Angeles adjacent. Beautiful city, lots of filming locations, lots of history, lots of conventions happen here, the Rose Bowl, all of that. It's a particularly gray day here in Pasadena. Here in California, it's been gray for like a month. Sun every now and again, very strange. You don't see that in California too often for this long of a time, but yeah, it's been not the best weather. It's a bus stop. You don't see bus stops like that too often in other cities. So here I am, I'm doing a video about an actor named Jack Nance. You may or may not be familiar with him. If you are a David Lynch fan like myself, then you would be familiar with him. He was in Eraserhead, David Lynch's linchpin film is uh, kind of one that helped him break through but of course Twin Peaks one of my favorite TV shows uh, he played Pete Martell I love Twin Peaks wasn't too keen on the reboot wasn't too keen on the movie but I love the original series it only lasted like two seasons but it was great and Jack Nance was a big part of it Jack Nance had a very very uh, interesting life that I read about him. But his death is really, really interesting and bizarre and sad. Hello. Very, very sad. And in this apartment right here where he passed away. But in that parking lot over there with that windchills, that's a uh, donut shop, apparently that's where it happened. A lot of twists and turns to this story. Now, one thing I should say about it, he was married to Kelly Van Dyke, which is Jerry Van Dyke's daughter. If you know Jerry Van Dyke, Coach, he was on the TV show Coach. Kelly Van Dyke, he met her in rehab. And she also met a few other people in rehab. She became uh, an adult actress. She made quite a few films. But, she, and so she had... She had major mental health issues going on and addictions and struggles. And she ultimately took her own life while she was on the phone with Jack. He was in Oregon filming Meatballs, part four, classic. And that devastated him. He was deeply, deeply in love with his wife. But she took her own life while he was on the phone. That had to have just destroyed him. And apparently it did. I said, I love you, Kelly. And she said, I want you to listen to me kill myself. And I did. But he was a drinker. He was clean for a while, and then he went back to drinking. And that's where the story picks up because she had to have been pretty drunk when all of this happened. So I'm going to walk you to the apartment. It should be the next one here. Right 
here. Let me just check the address. Yes, right here. This is the building that Jack Nance was living in. Now you're gonna see there's a crosswalk here. I read that he did not use the crosswalk too often. This is the main road in Pasadena. It's Fair Oaks Avenue and it is heavy, heavy traffic all the time, day and night. I've been to Pasadena for many things. But yeah, this is, and it's not even turning and I'm waiting and waiting. Oh, I'm gonna keep waiting. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna walk back up here and do my Frogger impression that I've done before. I'm gonna come back to the building, I think. December 29th, 1996. Early in the morning, he walked over to that donut shop, Winchell's. And there's a bunch of them here in LA. But apparently he got into an altercation with some people either in the parking lot or inside the donut shop. And this wasn't unusual for him because he had a bit of a big mouth. Uh, he, he's not a big guy, but maybe, you know, what do you call it, Napoleon syndrome, maybe a little. He wasn't afraid of anyone, really. And he mouthed off a lot. I'm not blaming him, but you know, you gotta pick your battles. And apparently, he got beat up pretty bad. So I don't know if it's in the, the because he wasn't too sure. He, his story, because he did talk about it before he passed away a day later. It was right around here. This is the donut shop that he was coming to. His cause of death was blunt force trauma, acute subdural hematoma. And a friend found him. There's the apartment right there. The next day, in the apartment, dead. So he was working on a film project at the time with two people and he went the next day over to one of their houses and they noticed a bruise under his eye and they asked him about it. He said that he got into an altercation with two Latino gentlemen that he mouthed off a little too much, got what was coming to him and he got beat up. He said one of them punched him in the face. He was wearing glasses at the time fell to the ground and then he said he was having a bit of a headache and he went home back to that apartment and then one of the two people he was working on the project with went and checked on him like I said and found him dead and you gotta remember we're going on the story that Jack himself told his two friends he's working on the project with but it's an unsolved homicide still that's what it's listed as it's not really known if what he said is correct. People, some people thought maybe he was drunk and fell in his own apartment, and that's what happened. They found the story believable that he got into a fight, but it could have just been him being a bit of a tough guy, you know, making it up a little bit. But it's kind of a weird story, I think, to make up about yourself. Say, yeah, I got beat up in a parking lot with people notice that you're bruised. But, I mean, that's what he said happened. So it's not a far walk at all. I mean, they sell coffee. He loved coffee. It's over 24 hours, and apparently it's around 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning. It's one of the stranger celebrity deaths I've read about and heard about and wanted to cover for a long time, just because of the, the, the how odd it is. And... The location, I thought, was interesting how it's so close, but we don't know if it actually happened in that building or here. Did he really get into a fight with two people here and get the you-know-what beat out of him? Did he simply fall? His mother, I know, tailspin into a lot of grief after that. That was her firstborn son. And then... She died a few years later. I think about five years later. But yeah. As you can see, it's a very, very, very busy, busy road. 
Now, David Lynch himself said that Jack was a notoriously hard drinker, had a big mouth, wasn't afraid to say, speak his mind, and Jack always said he wouldn't be hard to kill. I've gotten this information from about two or three websites, and one website I want to shout out is my buddy Scott Michaels at Find a Death, because he talked to his brother, Jack Nance's brother, about some of this information. But there's another website I went to, and it bothered me which now, which one I read a complete history of his life. And he led quite an interesting life, and he was not too old, but he had a kind of a long history of just, just substance abuse, alcohol abuse, and, you know, without David Lynch, God only knows what would have happened to the guy. But very, very talented actor, and if you're a Twin Peaks fan, you remember Pete Martell. I can't believe a little crumb like that can stand up to this cram jack all duty vice. One, three, one. Two and three. If you're a fan of Meatballs 4, you remember him. Jack was cremated and his ashes were scattered off the coast of uh, Orange County, you know, south from here. Walking back now, there's the building right there where he passed away. So the question remains, what's the truth behind Jack Nance's death? Did he really get into altercation? Was he just kind of building himself up to, like, I got into a fight with some guys? You know, bravado, machismo. Or was he simply drunk and fell and hit his head? Well, like I said, it remains an unsolved homicide. So, I don't think it's ever going to be solved. This is, what are we looking at? 24... 27 years ago. I don't think anybody's going to come forward and admit to it. But this is the apartment. You see a lot of... I've said it before, I'll say it again. You walk around LA. This is te not, This is technically Los Angeles for... You know, it's, it's Pasadena. It's a different city, but... It's Los Angeles adjacent. Here in Los Angeles and Pasadena and the surrounding cities... There's so much movie history, there's so much true crime. You could pass a building like this, you wouldn't even know. Everybody that's driving by wouldn't even know. They may not even know who Jack Nance is. He's not a household name like Clooney or Pitt. But for David Lynch fans like myself, definitely, definitely well known. But you wouldn't know it if you just passed by this building right here. This is where his life ended. That would be the hallway. The doors are locked. All right, from Pasadena, California, this was my story about Jack Nance, something I've been waiting about two or three years to cover. Uh, yeah. I highly recommend, if you've never seen Twin Peaks, watch the original series from the 90s. It's so good. I have them all on VHS still. I recorded them when I was young. I have them all. I don't have a VHS player. I want one. I gotta get one. Thanks for watching. Rest in peace, Jack Nance. Rest in peace, Kelly Van Dyke as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace. Out.